valuation of tangible fixed assets. Valuation of tangible fixed assets. An asset that has a physical form such as building, machinery, vehicles are called tangible fixed assets. This is the opposite of an intangible asset such as patent or trademark. Tangible fixed assets are valued for presenting them in the balance sheet with due reference to the Companies Act provisions and the relevant accounting standards. Fixed assets are initially recorded at acquisition cost, which includes all expenditure to get the asset ready for use. Subsequent expenditure is added to the cost only if it will produce economic benefits beyond its originally assessed performance. Part 1 of Schedule 6 to the Companies Act requires to state net black value of each head of asset as bill. Original cost plus additions during the year to the particular block minus deletions to the particular block minus accumulated depreciation up to the end of the year minus the impairment loss calculated as per accounting standard 28. We have to clearly understand in the initial period how the acquisition cost of fixed asset is arrived. Please carefully watch the table for the additions and the deletions to be made to the purchase cost of an asset. Import customs duties, non-refundable taxes or levies should be added to the purchase cost. The cost which are directly attributable to bring the asset to the usable condition such as insulation cost, foundation cost, site preparation charges are to be added to the purchase cost. Professional and legal charges directly spent to purchase the asset should be added. The administration and factory overhead charges directly spent to bring the asset to the usable conditions can be added to the purchase cost. As per Para 13 of Accounting Standard 11, if there is any change in the foreign exchange liability for the purchase of the asset, it should be suitably added or reduced to the cost of the asset. Improvement expenditure that improvement expenditure which increase the future benefits from the existing asset is treated as cost of improvement. This cost of improvement or of any addition or extension which becomes integral part of the existing fixed assets or to be added to the value of the asset. So the important point is which becomes integral part of the existing fixed assets are to be added and which should increase the future benefits from the existing asset. If there is an increase in the revaluation of fixed assets, this can be added to the value of the asset by crediting to revaluation reserve account. But if there is a decrease in the revaluation, the decreased amount will be transferred to profit and loss account, account. As per accounting standard 28, the increase in impairment of asset is to be added and the decrease is to be deducted from the purchase cost. This we will see later. Grants and discounts received or to be reduced from the purchase cost. The grant to be treated as revenue 
over the period of the life of the asset if the management takes such kind of decision as per accounting standard 10 para 11 when a fixed asset is acquired in exchange for shares or other securities in the enterprise it is usually recorded at its fair market value or the fair market value of the securities issued whichever is more clearly identifiable and evident if any fixed asset is retired from active use and held for disposal it should be valued at the lower of the net book value and net realizable value now we shall see how the impairment of asset is given accounting treatment as per accounting standard 28 and ias 36 when the recoverable amount of an asset falls below its carrying amount the carrying amount has to be reduced to the recoverable amount and the loss on impairment should be charged to profit and loss account in addition to the depreciation carrying amount is nothing but the amount we are carrying in the balance sheet recoverable amount is the higher of an asset's net selling price and its present value in use if the recoverable amount is equal or more than the carrying amount no impairment loss is accounted for and asset is not impaired if subsequently the recoverable amount increases we have to make reversal entry that is addition shall be made to the already reduced carrying amount however the reversed carrying amount should never exceed the original carrying amount which would have been had there been no impairment because by reversing the impairment loss the carrying amount of goodwill will increase which indirectly recognizes the increase in internally generated goodwill which is prohibited by accounting standard 26 intangible assets now we shall understand the accounting treatment for revaluation reserve if the value of the asset is increased by way of revaluation we have to debit the asset to the extent of increment and credit the revaluation reserve and the depreciation for the asset should be calculated on the revalued asset value the portion of depreciation on the revalued amount should be transferred to profit and loss account by crediting the profit and loss account and debiting the revaluation reserve after the revaluation increase if there is any decrease in the particular asset by revaluation during the year this decrease should be debited to revaluation reserve and credited to the asset account if there is a decrease over the revaluation reserve of the particular asset it can be transferred to profit and loss account if the particular asset is fully sold and if there is a loss it can be transferred to the unutilized revaluation reserve the balance in the revaluation reserve after the sale of asset should be transferred to general reserve if there is a change in the method of depreciation the unamortized amount of the fixed assets should be charged to revenue following the new method from the date of the asset coming into use that is if we have to 
that is we have to reverse the entire depreciation made as per the old rate and we have to find the depreciation using the new rate if the useful life of the asset is revised the unamortized value of the fixed assets should be charged to revenue over the revised remaining period of the useful life if the value of the fixed asset is revised the depreciation should be charged to write off the unamortized value of the fixed assets including revaluation profit or loss over the remaining useful life now we shall see a practical problem to understand the concept of fixed assets valuation 